So in this video, we will see the different phases of a compiler. Compiler, as you know, is a program that converts a source program into a target code. The target code can be a high-level program or a machine code. It depends upon the compiler that you're using. So anyway, the different phases of a compiler are lexical analysis, syntax analysis, semantic analysis, intermediate code generation, code optimization, and code generation. There are two supporting utilities that is simple table management and error handling and bookkeeping. All right, now uh, in this video, we will see a very brief uh, description on, I mean, very, I mean, we will see all the six phases very briefly. In the next video, we will see the working of all these phases in supporting utilities with the help of an example. So, as this is an introductory video, we will just see uh, what exactly is the uh, principal function of each and every phase in this. So, the very first phase is lexical analysis. See, uh, I mean, see, you can see that uh, the input to the compiler is a source program and output is a target code. As I have told you earlier, told you earlier uh, the target code can be a high level program or uh, it could be a machine code. It depends on the compiler that you are using. Now, uh, for uh, the source program contains a statement like A is equal to some B plus 2. Now, we will see uh, what, uh, what does this lexical analyzer do. See, basically lexical analyzer breaks the program down into meaningful units called tokens. That is, if the uh, statement is A is equal to B plus 2, which is a statement in source program, assume that. Uh, in that case, this will be broken down into different tokens here. A is the token number 1. You know that that is a variable, right? So, A is a meaningful unit of the program and that forms token number 1. Now, equal to is another meaningful unit that is token number 2. And B is a variable name that is token number 3. See, even if it is B1, that is token number 3 together. Now, plus is token number 4. And 2 is token number 5. Of the uh, was a semicolon, that would be token number 6. So, these will be the different tokens. That is, the lexical analyzer breaks the program down into a group of meaning, unit, meaningful units known as tokens. Now, uh, lexical analyzer will return these tokens in the following format. That is, for A is an identifier. So, it will return identifier, comma, some number let it be one this means that uh, the variable a is present in the first row of the symbol table so this is the address of the symbol table where a is present you know that symbol table is a data structure that stores every variable in a program with field for exact fields for its attributes right so this one is the address where address and address of the symbol table row where you can find a now for equal to you can uh, return assignment or assignment operator the token name comma equal to z value. Now for b1 you know that z again an identifier. So identifier comma now b1 is a variable uh, uh, assume that it is find in the uh, 20th row of the symbol table. So B uh, identify comma 20, but 20 is the row number where you can find B1. Okay. Now uh, plus is an operator. So O comma plus where O is the token name and plus is the value of the token. Now 2 is a number, you know. So num is the token name, 2 is the value. Now semicolon. Uh, assume that you have defined a class of tokens named as punctuations where you wherein you have included every punctuation symbols like dot, uh, comma, semicolon, colon, and everything. So, if uh, semicolon is part of that, uh, you can return punctuation, comma, semicolon. So, these will be the six different tokens that will be written by the lexical analyzers to the syntax analyzer after this. Okay. Now, we will see uh, syntax analyzer. So, uh, the output of lexical analyzer is a stream of tokens. Now, syntax analyzer, we will take this very same program into very same statement and account. 
See, uh, the syntax analyzer is actually returning a syntax tree to the next phase. That is, it will be building a syntax tree out of the operands and operators present in the statement. For example, in this statement, the main operator is equal to the left side of equal to is a, a is equal to something, isn't it? The next operand for equal to is b1 plus 2, isn't it? So, plus will be uh, the operator b1 is an operand, 2 is another operand. This will be returned by the syntax analyzer to the next space. That is, it is creating a syntax tree out of the operands and the operators available in the statement. So, even all the... Um, Operators will act as the uh, parents and the operands will act as the children. So you can see A is the or A and B plus 2 are the operands for equal to. Now B1 and 2 are the operate, operands for plus. So this is the syntax tree and that is the output of syntax analysis phase and which will be passed on to the semantic analysis phase. Okay. Now, uh, for the semantic analysis phase, what it does is it collects type information for all the variables present and perform necessary type conversion. It also returns all the type related errors as well. For example, if you have written A of uh, 2.3, where A is an array name, you know that 2.3 is not a valid index. For indices, we will be using this uh, whole numbers, isn't it? So, this is a syntax error. So, semantic analysis phase will uh, identify this error. And again, uh, if this is the case of A and B1 are floating point numbers, definitely it will convert 2 also to a floating point number. Like that, that is all the type conversions, type related LS, everything will be handled by semantic analysis phase. Now, the intermediate code generation phase. Uh, in intermediate code generation phase, the code will be converted to some suitable intermediate representation. An example for intermediate uh, representation is three address code in which it says that in every expression a maximum of three operands is allowed. Less than three is fine. For example, of, this is actually asked by the syntax of three address code because we have just three operands in the statement, isn't it? Now if we have some C, uh, you know that you have 1, 2, 3 and 4 operands in this statement and that is not allowed. So you have to convert this into a suitable 3 address code representation and that will be some T1 is equal to B1 plus 2, T2 is equal to T1 plus this remaining C and A is equal to that T2. So you have to convert that into some suitable 3 address code representation. Now next phase is code optimization. So uh, in code optimization what it does is it will perform some transformation on the code such that the uh, after that the code can be made to run faster or take less space of both at the same time. That is you can improve the efficiency of the code. For example see we have a statement here like a is equal to b1 plus 2 plus c isn't it. So if the, the value of a is never used anywhere in the program. You can simply avoid this computation. It's also known as dead code because this code is dead because a is not used anymore. So if you are avoiding this whole statement, the amount of time required to compute this statement can be saved as ended. Such kind of optimizations can be performed. We will see code optimization in detail in another video. Next is code generation. See, code generation uh, actually assigns registers and memory locations for each and every variable in the program and generate a suitable code. For example, if this is our code, uh, we will do like move of b1 is a floating point number, move some r1, comma b1. So the value of b1 will be moved to the register r1. Now add r1 comma 2, 2 will be added to this r1 and the result should be assuming that it is an r1 can be copied to the memory location which is pointed to by a like this. Now at the end you will get this target code which is this machine language code. Now we have two supporting utilities. One is simple table as I have told you earlier. 
simple table is a data structure that stores every variable in a program with fields for exact attributes like size, type, uh, etc. Storage is type everything. Now error handling and bookkeeping routine uh, help us to find, detect and report all the errors. Uh, it will either report the error to the user or somehow will deal with the error so that the subsequent phases of compilation can move ahead without any problem. So that is error handling and bookkeeping. So these are the different phases of the compiler. Uh, in this video, this is all. Uh, in the next video, we will see the working of each and every phase and this with the help of a suitable example. Thank you.